Welcome to this week's Decision Desk HQ 2022 election forecasting model, where we use our proprietary model to forecast the outcome this November of every single seat in the United States House and Senate, and then of course, which party is going to win the majority in both of them. we're starting to see a lot more polling post Labor Day, and that's having a pretty big effect on the number of races that we're interested in, especially in the House. I'm Dr. Liberty Vitter, Professor of Data Science, so let's dive into this week's model to see what's changed since last week. So in the Senate, we just have one toss-up race completely this week, and that's Nevada, which is super interesting given its trajectory over the past month or two. Um, Catherine Cortez Masto started out as our model's most really endangered, vulnerable Democratic senator. And aside from just a few weeks where one really out there sort of outlier poll showed her way up over Republican Adam Laxalt, the race has really stayed in the toss up range. It's anyone's game, but it's way, way our biggest mover this week with the race being at 52, 48% favor in the Democrats right now, meaning I'd be very worried if I were her. So that's down from last week's 63 to 37% chance of Cortez Masto holding the seat. And this change is really due to three new polls, post-Labor Day polling, um, released in the last week, where two of them showed Laxalt very much so in the lead. So Laxalt is, whether it's that he's actually gaining or there's just more polling, we're not sure, but he is certainly in the running. So overall in the Senate, the outcome remains what it's been for a while, a 50-50 split, with Democrats retaining control thanks to this tie, with the breaking vote being President Kamala Harris. But with this extra polling post Labor Day, we're starting to see some very interesting movement. Our model, though, still gives that a 62% chance probability of being the outcome, this 50-50 split, which is down two and a half points um, just since last week. And I think we have to realize that this does mean something with more polling coming out. The Nevada polls are not necessarily outliers, these three new ones that we see, and could be showing some sort of real underlying trend, at least in these toss-up states that the Senate um, is really being going to be going to be the real question over. Let's move over to the House. Now, this one is super interesting. The GOP chances of taking the majority are still strong at 76%, but we've seen really steady erosion from the high 90% range when we started tracking this number back in July. So Democrats are chipping away or Republicans are losing, whichever way you want to look at it. And the biggest factor in this lessening of the GOP's advantage is this generic ballot, which is just only about plus one for Republicans. And that has really been eaten away at by Democrats over the past two months. So right now, our mean seat projection is 228 seats for the GOP with 207 seats for the Democrats. And that 15% or so drop in the chance of a Republic majority that we've seen in these last two Two months translates to about 11 fewer seats from this high high water mark that we had for the GOP which is significant that is a real number of seats but we have three really high profile races that have changed ratings just since last week in Iowa 3, Democratic Congresswoman Cindy Axney sees her race's move from lean Democrat to toss up. Never a good sign for someone. This comes after the first poll in the race shows her very much tied with the Republican challenger, Zach Nunn. We also see a mover in Arizona too. So Democratic Congressman Tom O'Halloran's race versus Republican Eli Crane moves from this lean Republican to toss up again and not good thing for the Republicans based upon this increasing strength of the Democrats overall advantage in our generic bowing poll average. 
And finally, we see Republican Steve Shabbat, where he sees his race to hold Ohio's first congressional district, drop into the toss-up category from lean Republican. So another move for the Republicans. This comes after an impact research poll showed Democrat contender um, Craig Landsman leading by three points over him. So there have been some serious movers and shakers this week. But you have to remember, overall, there are 13 toss-up seats out of all of them. Eight either have Democratic incumbents or are in Democratic-held seats, while the GOP only has one incumbent and just three seats that lean towards them in that group. So it's certainly still on Democratic turf. One of them is Colorado's 8th Congressional District, and it's a new seat that's not even currently occupied. So very much on Democratic turf. That's going to do it for this week. And if you're enjoying these videos, please give it a like and then subscribe to our channel below. And then make sure to sign up for notifications. It's that little bell button right below there so that you get a notification when we post one of these looks in our model. If you have any questions you'd like us to address in a future video about our forecasts or modeling in general or any questions about these elections, please just leave them in the comments and we will do our best to answer answer them either in the comments or in a future follow-up video. But until next week, I'm Dr. Liberty Vittert, Professor of Data Science, and thank you all so much for watching.